I was a busy working mum of two. Um, so I've got two children. Um, before cancer, they were uh, three and six. Um, yeah, and I was solicitor, um, travelling around Bristol, Bath, London, Swindon, all of the offices. Um, so life was, I tend to describe life before cancer as 100 mile an hour, I think. Um, I had, so after I had my daughter, my daughter is my youngest, um, and after I had her, I was breastfeeding her, um, and just noticed that when I'd stopped, um, my nipple was inverted, um, and it didn't really go back to normal. Um, and they said that I had blocked milk ducts um, from when I'd breastfed my child and that I was really young and it would probably clear up. Um, and it was fine. Um, so about another year, year and a half, and it still wasn't right. If anything, I felt like it got worse. Um, I had like dimpling on the side, um, the thick area of thickening had got worse. Um, and I had private health care with work, so I thought, well, I'll go and get a second opinion because it's just not sitting right with me. And obviously, because I was private, they gave me all of the tests um, and they immediately, on the day that I went to be checked out, they said, yeah, it doesn't look good. Um, there's something in my, uh, it was my right breast and also there was a couple of lymph nodes that looked like they were abnormal. Um, so they did a biopsy there and then, but said, you know, we're pretty sure that you have cancer. Um, so they gave me those, the, the pathology back to say, so you would be having chemotherapy first before any surgery. Um, but then they also said that my CT scan had come back clear, but that my bone scan had showed and that I had um, small volume bone mets um, in my hips, my ribs and my spine. Um, and that, that meant that I was no longer curable, but I was treatable. treatable. Or after I'd had chemotherapy and I'd had a good response to the chemotherapy, they did say to me that about 50% of people with my particular type don't respond at all to their treatment. I'm glad they didn't tell me that beforehand. Um, but I think that just shows how precarious it is, whether you get to have a bit more time. Um, but I, I think it was just, and particularly for someone like me that likes a plan and I was always in control of everything, um, to all of a sudden be completely out of control, be told that this is going on in your body um, and that you now need to have these drugs and nobody can tell you whether they'll work or how long you're going to be here. Um, it's just really, really scary. So having the photo shoot with Sophie today on about scars, um, and scars that have saved our life. Um, I always felt that I wanted a mastectomy when I found out, even though the, the standard of, of care generally with secondary breast cancer is that you don't get offered a mastectomy because they say the cells have already left the breast area and so there's no need to remove the breast. Um, but I wanted them to remove it because although they couldn't tell me it would make a difference, they couldn't tell me that it wouldn't. Um, I did struggle initially in making that decision, even though I knew in my gut that that was the right thing to do. I struggled with making that decision because I wondered whether the scar would be a permanent reminder of my illness. Um, so something that would make me remember that I'm sick. Um, but since I've had my surgery, um, I don't see it like that anymore. Um, and I look at my, I thought today being in the photo shoot with Sophie um, could actually be empowering. And in looking at my scar as a sign of strength, not weakness, um, something that my body's been through. You know, it's an, I'm so lucky my surgeon was brilliant. Um, the scar is so neat. Um, and I look at it and I see it as a sign of strength now of what my body's been through and what it's capable of. Um, so a reminder of how I will continue to fight, not of the illness that I've got.